Chao Bui San, Good Morning in Vietnamese. Uh, for today's video, we're going to be talking about open collector outputs. A lot of different sensors and devices use an open collector output. Uh, they work differently than your mind wants to perceive what an output should be. Typically for us as humans, uh, especially new to electronics, we would think of an output from an electronic device to either be on or off, unless it's an analog output, in which case it would be a variable output from some value to another value. But uh, basically, open collector outputs are digital outputs. They are, in essence, either on or off but they're not outputting a high signal to us to see that. So with that, we need to understand uh, open collector outputs and how we have to deal with the three states of that in a circuit. Here on the bench, I'm showing you three different uh, sensors. I uh, forgot what this one is. I just remember it being open collector. This might actually be the same as that. Uh, this is a Hall effect sensor that is out, uh, open collector, and this is a passive infrared sensor, which also is open collector. Uh, this is a very, very tiny sampling of the variety of open collector sensors that there are. Uh, so don't just think, oh, well, heck, I'll never use those. Uh, you'll probably run across many open collector sensors if you stick with the, uh, the hobby of uh, electronics. Let's dive into uh, some fritzing diagrams that I think will be very beneficial for us uh, to explain and understand open collector uh, outputs. We're going to use a fritzing diagram to help explain all of this. And to do that, I'm going to use a stand-in for uh, any number of sensors. Because I, what I really want to convey here is the concept of what open collector is doing. Now, the bold uh, wording at the top says, think of open collector as a path to ground or zero volts. And that would be true when the sensor or the switch is active. So here we're, uh, here's our switch, push button momentary, open collector, sensor output. It's a stand-in for it. Uh, if the switch is open or if the sensor is off, our state would be that of floating. It would not be on and it would not be off. It would be somewhere in between. And we're showing that here in the diagram. Uh, here's our breadboard. I've got our power rail down below with zero volts and with five volts. At this point, there's no connection on five volts, uh, but we do have a connection to one side of our switch or sensor. Uh, that is at zero volts. Well, if the sensor is open or the switch is not closed, it is floating. There's, this is just a wire hanging out in space at this point. Even if this end is connected to an input, it's still floating at this point. Now, in the world of digital electronics, you really want a zero or off or a one or on state. You don't want something in between. That's the world of analog electronics. So how do we get our, our open collector that has the state of float or zero volts uh, to be useful? Well, let's first see how we can get at least one of those states out of the device. Same circuit here on the right. This time the switch is closed. So if the switch is closed, the state would be off or zero volts. Or, in other words, if the sensor is on or active, the state equals off or zero volts. That's all I can give us with any certainty. So how does the circuit work? Uh, zero volts on this side, zero volts goes up to the switch, but the switch doesn't connect it to our wire, which is our stand-in output. Over here, the switch is closed, and now zero volts is present here on this output wire. Now let's take a look at it in the next phase. Uh, same uh, diagrams, a little differently laid out. 
Um, here we're showing uh, the Raspberry Pi Pico over on another little mini breadboard. Uh, that one's got a 3.3 volt power rail and zero volts uh, coming out of the Pico. Of course, it would have power going in. Um, but we're using this particular uh, uh, input uh, for this discussion. It's uh, GPIO 15, and it is configured as an input. Well, if it's just configured as an input, it is floating. It is neither high nor low. It's just kind of in some random state. So the Pico input is floating unless pulled up or down. And over here, our open collector sensor output is floating. So now you got floating connected to floating here in the middle. Um, so you're not really going to be in any uh, state of on or off. It is that random floating state, which is susceptible to radio frequency, electrical noise in a circuit, uh, all kinds of things can affect this state. So you're not assured with some level of probability of what we need, off or on, zero or one. Okay, so how do we deal with that? Typically, open collector circuits uh, require a, a little bit more, but not outside of the bounds of typically what we do with our Picos anyway. Here on our Pico, I've added a couple of wires and a resistor. Now, what I want that Pico input to be, the state I want it to be in for an open collector output, I want it to naturally be in the on state. I do that with a pull-up resistor. Uh, so I'm going to uh, create an input pulled high with an external pull-up resistor. In this example, here's our 3.3 volt rail going into a 10K ohm resistor, uh, which creates uh, about, uh, well, it's 0.33 milliamps, a very tiny amount of current on it. Um, and then that is connected to pin 15 here on the breadboard. Now this wire would, of course, at this point, continue on over where it's connected to our sensor, which is in the open state, currently floating high. Um, so on the sensor, the open collector output, we're floating still, but my switch pulls it high but it's not doing anything because it can't connect anywhere. Now, let's take a look at another way we can pull this side of the switch high, or our input high. This is using an external resistor. Here on this example drawing, you can see that I've removed the external pull-up resistor, and instead I'm using the internal pull-up resistor. And I very cleverly drew that on top of the RP2040 chip uh, with a gigantic internal uh, resistor. Now, the internal uh, pull-up, pull-down resistors on the RP2040 are, I believe, at 60,000 ohms, 60K. So at 3.3 volts, that creates uh, 0.05 milliamps, a really, really tiny amount of current. Now, uh, here, it, it'll function exactly the same as the external uh, pull-up resistor. It's just holding the state of this input high until something can pull it down to zero volts. So for that, we're going to go to the last and final slide. Now, in this example, uh, we can see that we're still using the internal pull-up resistor. Functionality be the same, internal or external. Um, but you'll notice that here it's gray. I'm kind of showing that as it's no longer pulled high because the high output signal with this tiny little 50 milliamps is being drawn to go to the easiest path to ground because our open collector sensor is active. In other words, our switch is closed so the path to ground is easier for the electrons to flow that way versus to go to the input. So now at this point, our input on the Pico reads zero. Seems a little strange, as I mentioned. Oftentimes we think of an output 
uh, from a sensor to be high or low. In the case of open collector, it is floating or low ground. Uh, so when we see it from the Pico side, um, we would either see floating or low, which isn't true digital, zero or one. So we modify that by adding a pull-up resistor, which adds a tiny amount of current to that input so that it sees high, unless the switch or sensor pulls that signal low with a free-flowing path to ground. And that is open collector outputs, uh, demonstrated here with uh, fritzing diagrams and a switch as a stand-in for the sensor. But I hope this helps make things clear for you. Uh, now I want to point out one more interesting thing about open collector inputs that's kind of a side benefit. Um, now in this diagram, I intentionally put this breadboard at 5 volts, this breadboard at 3.3 volts. And as we know, our digital IOs should not connect directly to a 5-volt output from another device. Our device, the Pico, is a 3.3-volt for digital I.O. But here, I'm associating or interfacing our Pico to a 5-volt device. Well, it works out quite nicely, because the voltage is irrelevant on the other circuit. The our output that we're really getting is only a path to ground. When it's not in the state of path to ground, it is floating. So it does not provide us with 5 volts back to the Pico. Very nice benefit and allows us to interface to many other sensors that uh, we might need um, a level shifter in between to handle that. So that's kind of a side benefit of it. And I've done this up to 24 volts in various circuits on some of my machines and other things, and it's worked out quite nicely. Uh, so that kind of wraps it up here for open collector outputs. Um, hopefully you can get through this, you get a good, gra a good grasp of it. And now when you're looking at other sensors and you see open collector, you can be a little more confident that you can go ahead and utilize it. That'll wrap it up for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. And if so, hopefully you can uh, give me a like and uh, share it with other viewers as well. Thanks again.